This is the first Columbia blacktail I've ever laid eyes on. Well, at least like a fresh dead Columbia blacktail. I'd probably touch someone's skull or mount. These deer are interesting because like I've hunted Sitka blacktails. Now I've hunted Columbia blacktails. I've hunted mule deer. What they think now with modern genetics work is mule deer are, are, are kind of a brand new species in a historical sense. You know, maybe like around the time humans arrived in the new world, like that's all the older mule deer are. And they think that it was the result of hybridization between black-tailed bucks and white-tailed does when white-tails had, had a more western range. I mean, whitetails have been around forever, man, just like expanding and shrinking and expanding and shrinking their range. Always down in the, particularly down in the southeast, we've had whitetails a long time. In a deep, deep sense, whitetails probably were all the way across the continent at some point, and then something caused the, the middle ground to vanish, and then what you, what you wound up with over time was black-tailed deer and white-tailed deer. And then later, they came back together again, and there was hybridization for mule deer. You can just really see it. When you look at one of these Columbia blacktails, it just seems so much like, like this kind of a daintier, more slender mule deer, more so than a sickle blacktail to the north. And you know, two taxonomists like mule deer and blacktails are kind of lumped together. In fact, when it comes to scoring antlers, like organizations of scoring antlers, like Boone and Crockett, they just have an arbitrary, the I-5, Interstate 5 in California. Everything west of that is regarded as a Columbia blacktail. Everything east of that is regarded as a mule deer. But this guy could cross that corridor and he would become, for hunting purposes, he would all of a sudden be a mule deer, same deer.